Hi, everyone. This is Matt Paolelli, and I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications from Online Seminary. And on this episode of the Formation Podcast, we're here with Dan Karenchen and Kevin Gregus of the Archdiocese of Chicago. Hey, guys. How's it going? What's up, Matt? Hey, Matt. Good to be here with you. Yeah, thanks for making the time. Um, so you guys are getting ready to embark on the nine-week study pilgrimage to the Holy Land. You're leaving tomorrow, I believe. Um, so we kind of want, want to just talk about that today and uh, what you're looking forward to. And then also, you will be hosting some episodes from the Holy Land. Um, so we'll talk a little Correct. bit about that. So uh, first, maybe if you guys could just introduce yourselves and give a little brief uh, overview of the revocation story. Kevin, do you want to start? Sure. Yeah. So my name is Kevin Gregus. I'm a in third theology here at Mundelein, I'm studying for Chicago, Archdiocese of Chicago. Um, and yeah, the short, the uh, ele elevator pitch story, uh, vocation story. So um, kind of came into my the faith of my own um, beyond just going with my family in high school, carried that into college. During college, I wasn't really getting fed like I wanted to. So I started doing a, uh, I, I did a Totus Tuus program over the summer, uh, basically Help working with kids, uh, program it was there that I really fell in love with the idea of all the things the priests do: liturgy, the hours, the mass, um, teaching, praying every day. There's a lot of really good things. But when I went back to college, I was studying engineering. Uh, I kind of it kind of faded away. It didn't really work out. So I was like, oh, I guess that's well. I guess priesthood really isn't for me. It, just, it would have stuck if if it was supposed to be the thing I was going to do. So I went on. I got a, I got a um, job. I was uh, working on airplanes for a while out on the East Coast. Finally moved back to Chicago. And once I was back in Chicago, uh, something I really had wanted to to do was live in Chicago. And uh, my sister was part of the St. Alphonsus Parish. And so I kind of plugged right in there. It's this great young adult parish right down in Lakeview, uh, right in the center of Lakeview. A lot of great young adult stuff there. And one of the things that was there was this men's group that had started up pretty close to when I when I came back. And so, so I didn't join it right away, but it, uh, it's funny enough, it's actually where I met Dan the first time was at, was at this men's group at St. Alphonsus in Lakeview. And I, once I was kind of plugged in with them, a lot of the things that I remembered about that Totus Tuus summer kind of came back. Uh, praying liturgy the hours, just talking about faith. It was something that I had kind of sorely missed for a long time. Um, and just finding an actual real community. Again, things something that I didn't really have when I was living on the East Coast. I loved my job, but it was you know spiritually and and socially it was wasn't what I what I needed. And so, really got more and more with the with the men's group. We eventually did this this silent retreat together. Uh, in this, we actually Airbnb a mini mansion in Highland Park, and we did the silent retreat together. And uh, it was on that retreat that God kind of broke down any wall that I'd put up. Uh, I took this prayer advice that the retreat director gave to heart, just prayer should not be exhausting. And so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to back off and just sit here and be oration. And then right there, God just said, Hey, everything you love about um, life, about, about uh, being you, the fraternity and the church and teaching and the liturgy, all these things, you can do that uh, in an even more excellent and, ex and elevated way in, if you go to seminary and become a priest. And so uh, it happened very quickly from there. I talked to the vocation director for Chicago. And, um, you know, a few months later, I was doing my, my interviews. And a few months later after that, I, I quit my job uh, as an engineer and started at Mundelein. Awesome. Dan, you want to share your story? Okay. Uh, yeah. So my experience, I, there's a lot of similarities that uh, I think Kevin and I both share in our story where it was in college where I, I feel like I really grew into my faith and it became something that I chose, something that I really wanted to, uh, to be a part of my life and not just that, but the center of my life. Um, that came through. It actually started out with a, a Bible study of a, a handful of Protestants that I were, was in the, that were in the marching band with me. And through that, I was invited to go onto a Catholic retreat through our Newman Center down at the University of Illinois in Champaign. And that was kind of the launching pad. And then I got connected with the Fellowship of Catholic University Students or FOCUS afterwards and attended one of their conferences. And this, this was all uh, early 2015. And from there, everything just little by little just started to fall into place. I, I fell in love with the priesthood because I was surrounded by priests who loved their vocation and who 
uh, loved the college students there. And they looked really joyful. I was like, man, like they have a joy that is contagious and I really want that. And so, so I just began to discern little by little. Uh, I had a lot of fears. I had a lot of hesitations, but it really was, it was just something I had to take one step at a time and just continue to bring to prayer every single day as I was learning how to pray and was exposing myself more to the sacraments uh, and making that a part of my life. That is where things just really just things continue to, to gain momentum. And so I'm so grateful for that. So I worked for a year in public accounting after college because I was still discerning at that point. But I was surrounded by a community of, of men at that house that were also discerning. And so it just gave me a very comfortable place to discern more. Uh, so that was down in the city. And then I met Kevin at St. Alphonsus through the men's group that became a social outlet for me and just a great way to grow in fraternity and faith with other men. And I, I quit my job after that, that year and entered the seminary. And it's just been, it's just been a joy ever since. It's really cool, you know, that you ask us to share our vocation stories because, uh, because it's, it's, it's kind of crazy thinking that that was four and a half years ago when we first walked into seminary and pre-theology together, Kevin and I, and now all of a sudden we're going to the Holy land. And this is one of those experiences that, the guys that you're just, you're thinking about for four, four and a half years, you know, like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to go. And you keep hearing stories and guys come back transformed and, and just have, having such profound encounters. So, so it's really, really cool to just look back and be like, wow, the time has gone by so quickly, but we're very grateful. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, it's cool that you guys have such similar stories too, and we're able to even know each other before seminary mm -hmm. and then uh, be on this journey together. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, before we get into the Holy Land, it's obviously the beginning of a new semester here. Did you guys do anything interesting over your Christmas breaks? Uh, yeah, so we spent a little time uh, just in our, our parishes. We all get assigned to parishes, of course. Uh, we're, we're close by. Dan's in Arlington Heights. I'm in uh, Park Ridge. And uh, so we kind of hung out. Um, of course, with, with like all the COVID things kind of expl exploded back up, it kind of put a damper on a lot of the you know, any sort of parties or a lot of big family gatherings, but we we're still able to spend some time with family. And then we were able to go um, out to the West Coast for a little bit to visit a, a former classmate and his family who we kind of grown close with. Uh, even got a day of skiing while out there. We met up with a another seminarian from Seattle. We got to go skiing, which was the snow was in immaculate condition. So uh, I think I think we've gone and actually I think we've actually this is our we've gone skiing every year since we started at Mundelein. I think it's our fourth Mundelein. time. Yeah. 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 Nice. Um, great. Well, obviously COVID is, uh, is an issue and it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride to even know if you guys were going to be, uh, going to the Holy <laughs> land, but, uh, you made it and I presume you all got your tests and everything in, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're set to go. We had a, we had a meeting this morning, um, with all the guys who are going and the, and the priests who are, and, and, uh, all the faculty are going with us. We're, we're to, to depart tomorrow. Awesome. Cool. And this is the first trip to the Holy land for both of you, or have you been there before? First trip. Okay. First trip. Cool. So uh, you mentioned this is kind of, first of all, it's a distinctive feature of Mundelein that um, seminarians get to go to the Holy Land for nine weeks, which is a, a long time uh, by seminary standards. I know a lot of other seminaries take trips to the Holy Land, but not in such a, an intense way. And um, with the opportunity to see so many different places and you're we'll be taking classes there as well. Um, so what are you kind of looking forward to about the trip? Or have you talked to any of your uh, brother seminarians? I know the deacon class took their belated trip uh, just a couple weeks ago and uh, came back. So have you had any conversations with them or others about what to expect? Yeah, I would say that in terms of expectations, they haven't changed a lot since, since thinking about this trip over the past few years, where I think the obvious appeal of the Holy Land is the ability to go to the place where Jesus Christ walked the earth 2,000 years ago. Uh, and what I guess what I'm really excited about that in particular is that Jesus came to a specific place at a specific time in human history. And of course, the, the Holy Land is a very different place now, but so much of what happened when Christ walked the earth, I mean, nothing was ever the same ever again, but, and so much of that has remained. And so just to be able to see that, to kind of encounter God more on God's terms in a way, um, by going to the Holy Land, I think would be, is really cool. So that's definitely what I'm looking forward to the most, but the guys have also, the guys who have gone in the past have spoken 
a lot about what the experience is like of the the current uh, kind of geopolitical situation that's there with with Israel and Palestine. And, and it's kind of a conflicted area of the world, and it has been for a long time. And I think there's a lot for us to learn there, too, and not separate that from the religious implications and just all the you know, and everything that comes with that. So there's there's really a lot that's going on there. There's so much to learn and just to experience. So and it's just done in a very in kind of a more of like a, like a you know, just a very sensual way. Right. To things you can see and hear and touch and, and things like that, as opposed to just learning about them in a classroom. So that's what I'm definitely the most excited about. Yeah, for sure. Kevin, do you have anything to add? Yeah, and it's 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 really nice to be able to talk to the guys who've gone before. Um, obviously, the, the guys who just went had a little different experience, a little shorter. But they said, um, and I think this is what we're going to run into over there. We'll find out. But it, the, with with COVID, there's a lot uh, fewer people traveling, and so they kind of had the they said they had kind of the the run of of the Holy Land in a way where normally there's lines and lots of crowds, and they said it was um, almost eerily quiet. So. It's a bummer we can't, you know, share it with a lot of people. But uh, the blessing there is you can kind of have a little more lengthy or um, immediate access to some of these holy sites, like especially in Jerusalem uh, with the Holy Sepulchre, um, but even even in other places. So that there's less there's less people, um, and we've been we've been getting a lot of uh, tips. We've you know several <laughs> close friends who have gone before. Uh, we were able to have dinner with one of them on on this past Tuesday kind of get some last minute advice. And I think one of the best things that he told me that I've really been car carrying with me and praying about as, as we prepare is to just go over with, with actually as few expectations as possible. Um, you know, when you, when you're going to this Holy land, as Dan said, like, this is where Jesus was at a, at a place and at a time. And, and you've, you've read all these stories in the Bible and the gospels. And so you, you know, yeah, I, 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 for me, I have a very close uh, uh, connection with Peter, with St. Peter. And so, you know, you might expect, oh, when I when I go to these sites where, like, you know, the first calling of Peter, oh man, it's going to be a really powerful moment. Well, it might, it might not be. Maybe they got us something else in story where you go to the, you know, the multiplication of the loaves and fishes where that happened, or the Mount of Beatitudes, and there's there's something there. But go in with, don't expect anything, but know that God has just so much consolation and grace and providence in store for you that you just kind of have to go in there and and keep your eye eyes open, your heart open for those experiences and not. Um, expect something to happen at a certain place or at a certain time, but just be be open to have to God breaking in at when you kind of least expect it. So I think that's, that's, that's some advice I've really pondered as we've gone, as we've prepared. Yeah, for sure. Um, so without any uh, putting too much expectation on it, are there any particular sites or locations you are looking forward to that you've always wanted to see or something like that? Uh, the sepulcher is definitely uh, one of them. I mean, just the fact that there's, there's one, place where you can go from you know you pretty much get, get the whole paschal mystery you get the you know, the 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 resurrection or the uh crucifixion on calvary um over to uh the tomb uh where the resurrection happens so the fact that all that's in kind of one place and there's some there's a chance to do overnights um and kind of be in the tomb um by yourself for for just a period of time it's just kind of, it's kind of a wild thing i i, I can't really grasp it in my brain right now, but just the, the experience, just kind of being there is going to be a big thing. Yeah. Uh, and I, we've also been told of like this kind of the beauty of especially Galilee. And we just spent a few weeks uh, in in Galilee, uh, which is uh, really awesome experience. But just the beauty and just where we go to do our, our, our retreat there. And that, I think those are the two places that I'm really looking forward to. Mm. For me, I think I'm really looking forward a lot to being by the Sea of Galilee. And some of my favorite passages in scripture, they all occurred along the shores of, 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 Gal of, of the Sea of Galilee right there. The, the call of, of Peter and James and John and Andrew. And uh, when Peter, after the resurrection, uh, is is reconciled with with our Lord before before the disciples are sent out. So there's, there's a lot that's going to be happening there. Um, the ability to go to Nazareth and to see... Um, you know, the house where Jesus lived the vast majority of his life, or at least, you know, to be in the site, right? I mean, Jesus, he was, his public ministry was only three years, right? And he was, but he was, but, but for, for 30 years, probably he was, he was in this one, probably in this one place. And so, 
So I just think it's really cool to just go see maybe some of the more, just really the more profound scriptural uh, parts, especially uh, in the north. So, but like Kevin, I'm looking forward to going to see uh, uh, Holy Sepulchre as well. And one final one is um, we were we were given a talk by a, a recently ordained Chicago priest about um, how profound of an experience he had at the at the Jordan River where Jesus was baptized. Where when he saw it, he's like, "This thing's a creek. It's dirty. It's you know, why do people care about this place so much?" And he said, "Well, it's because God touched it." Uh, that God was there. And I remember that, uh, that talk he gave to us just really stuck with me. So I really want to see the Jordan river too. And just, and maybe just experience just the normalcy of what it all looks like. Uh, and yet so profound at the same time. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, Kevin, you mentioned the retreat, the canonical retreat. Can you explain a little bit about what that's all about? Sure. So uh, part of canon law is that to prepare for ordination, which me and Dan are preparing for the diaconate ordination uh, in May, uh, and canon law uh, asks that men who are preparing for diaconate and then uh, another one for, for priesthood. And I assume there's one for bishop, but we'll, me and Dan will never have to experience that, God willing. Um, <laughs> but anyway, you have to do, before, uh, for, for this, it's just, just to just go on a, on, a ret- on a retreat, just you know, be with God in the silence. Um, so we'll do that all together. So this, this can happen anywhere. This is, doesn't have to be, it's not like go to the Holy Land and, and do it, but we're blessed to be able to do it in the Holy Land. This is something that's, Fairly recent for Mundelein um, to do to do this canonical retreat, and so actually one of our own uh, faculty members, our director of spiritual life, uh, Deacon Pat uh, Qualiana, is going to be able to. He's gonna, he'll come over. He'll kind of lead us lead us through the, the retreat. But really, it's a time to to reflect on uh, kind of God's providence up to that point. You know how He's prepared us for ordination, um, experience God in the moment, and then and then kind of as a way of looking forward and. And, and preparing us and, and seeing, hey, we're 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 ready to go um, for ordination as, as you know as ready as you as you can be, um, but really kind of see God's uh, presence in in your life as as you prepare for this monumental step uh, as in ordination. Yeah, well, Dan, you were talking about how it's only been you know four and a half years since you were living the first part of your vocation story. So, yeah. um, how are you guys feeling? Just kind of you know, this really is, it'll be this, then you come home and you kind of get ordained to the diaconate right away. Yeah. Uh, well, how does that feel? <laughs> yeah, it's a really quick turnaround. And uh, even the last few days, I've been speaking a little bit with uh, some folks in my family where we're talk- we're, we're trying to plan uh, diaconate ordination. We're even already looking forward to the uh, priesthood ordination. I'm like, oh my gosh, I mean, I just want to get on the plane on Saturday and get out, you know, without, you know, without having been quarantined or getting COVID or anything like that. So, um, it, it, it really, it, it kind of forces, in some ways, I think it kind of, it makes me think more of what my attitude for the pilgrimage needs to be. And it really needs to be kind of, kind of what Kevin was alluding to earlier, of one of serenity, of just, you just let, kind of, you just got to let things happen as they happen. Um, because a, so much of what's going to be going on with pilgrimage is going to be out of our control. Um, and with COVID, just the great unknown in the world today, I think in some ways it it's a good thing because it forces us to be humble. And I think the humility that's required on a pilgrimage is is you need a, you need a lot of it. And with COVID making things complicated, and then coming back and having that quick turnaround before ordination, it really just forces I forces us I think to let go of control of certain things and just allow God to work in the way that He works best. And uh, I'm not saying that that's <laughs> going to be easy. It's 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 been somewhat stressful even the past few weeks, you know, as we've been trying to prepare and trying to control, you know, how things are going to go. But um, yeah, I think there's just a great deal of serenity that's required with with the whole process up to ordination. Yeah, um, we talked about obviously you'll be seeing a lot of different sites, but also that you guys will be taking classes while you're there. Can you talk about what what classes you'll be taking and how that schedule kind of works? Yeah, so we've uh, we've got three classes this semester. Um, so one is a um, we're taking with uh, with our this moral theology class, social doctrine in the church, church church social teaching. So um, you know all you know human the right to life, uh, war and peace, migration, um, ecology, all those kind of social justice type issues. Um, so that that'll be especially uh, centered on when when Dr. Barrett will be there with us. 
and there, as Dan mentioned, kind of the, with, you kind of get the a firsthand look at a place where there is a lot of uh, social tension and groups that aren't necessarily being treated uh, equal or, or per their human dignity. And we'll be able to see that firsthand uh, and even have a chance to reflect on that and write on that as, as part of some projects. Uh, another class is it's a just kind of a global mission. It's more of a it seems to be more of an evangelization type class of, okay, so we're going to go to a place where Christianity is not the majority where, you know, in America, you know, yes, we, we call about, we would say, you know, we're in this post-Christian society, but uh, Christian values and the Christian religion is, is, is still the majority in, in the United States. And we're going to go to a place where it's not uh, and see how uh, Christians have to continue to practice and worship and live out and evangelize themselves. Their, their own faith in this in this minority way and so kind of be able to witness that and okay so how, how would you how would you go about evangelizing 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 oh my gosh i can't say it evangelizing there it is and and then what what, what lessons can we take take back to the united states uh and and we're going forward to our own parishes and then the last class is just uh the gospel of john and all of uh, all the um johannine literature so for john the uh and then the revelation. So uh, the advantage there is that, you know, it's a, it's a scripture class. So we're learning all about the, specifically while we're going to be in the Holy Land, the gospel of John, um, this, you know, the great, the, the fourth gospel, this great, a uh, very high theology gospel, but with the opportunity to, you know, of course, as Dan said, be in the place where those things happen. The, you know, the last supper, the, the feeding of the 5,000, the uh, woman at the well, the, the, those actual sites to be there, um, so we can get really get in your in your mind this this picture of like, okay, now when I read these when I read these stories, um, I currently uh, have the scenes from the the show The Chosen in my head, but now I'll be able to kind of in, even enhance that further and have the scenes from the Holy Land. Like here's the sites, here's where it really happened. Um, so the kind of the advantage of being able to take a scripture class while we're over there. Yeah, I was going to say having never been to the Holy Land, The Chosen is as close as I've gotten to uh, yeah I mean, seeing I think I, those sites. I, it's, I, I highly recommend it. It's one. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. Um, Dan, what are you, uh, what do you pack for a trip like this? So it's a little, so it's a pilgrimage, right? And so usually what you would pack would involve having a lot less. Um, I've done a few pilgrimages in my life, but most of them, you, it's just a constant changing of locations. So for example, I was able to hike the Camino de Santiago before, uh, in Spain for, for 40 days. Um, before seminary and I, I did a biking pilgrimage to world youth day the year before and it's you're just constantly changing locations and you you bring so little because you have to take it all with you um so it's a little different because we're so we're going to be staying in f like two to three general places for most of the, for i think most of the time and so as a result uh i think we're able to take maybe we're able to take a little bit more things that I think we can focus more on reading and uh, prayer. So I'm bringing uh, several really good books on spiritual reading. Um, some gospel reflections. I'm looking over at my stuff right now that I have on the floor here. Uh, of course, my braveries, uh, some uh, gospel reflections, um, a couple theological books that I've wanted to. I'm, re I'm bringing uh, St. Augustine's Confessions uh, because uh, my spiritual director is that's like his favorite book. And I, I actually have to be honest, I haven't read the whole thing yet. Uh, which probably kicks me out of seminary if this uh, podcast goes public. Um, <laughs> but uh, and then uh, we have the opportunity to to relax and, and hang around a little bit. So uh, Kevin and I enjoy playing a certain card game called Cribbage. So I'm bringing our Cribbage board here and a uh, deck of cards. Um, and yeah, so so a lot of it just has to do with prayer and uh, and our classes that we're going to take. But other than that, not very much. I just really want to allow free time to be spent in just a very just, all right, Lord, like, what, what do you want today? Where, where should I go today? What would you like me to see? Or who would you like me uh, to see? So just trying to keep it simple. Yeah. Along those lines, what are you uh, what are you packing metaphorically? What are you hoping to, to bring with you into this experience? And then what are you hoping to get oh. out of it? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So I'm actually bringing it. I've been reaching out to a lot of people. It's not really metaphorically, but I've been reaching out to a lot of people for prayer intentions. Um, it's I mean, we're going on pilgrimage like it just it's just constant prayer and especially just for people I love and care for. So I really want to be able to pray for their specific intentions as much as possible. So that's one of the biggest things. How about you, Kevin? Yeah, I think that um, Nancy just kind of unpacking that bringing the spirit of of I think again, w along with the lack of going with with little expectations, um, except that God will will show up. Um, this this there's that, again the spirit of of poverty uh, bringing over of just um, it's something something that I don't uh, personally well I can look at my my messy room. I, if, when my mom watches this, I apologize, mom. It's my bed is still not made. Uh, nothing's changed since I was you know eight years old. But you know, I think there's, there's a lot of stuff, and and I've really you know thought more and more about uh, you know living, especially as we approach ordination. Like you're, you're there's not a vow of poverty that the diocesan priests take, um, but that doesn't mean that that you, you're going to go. Oh, you you make it, you make money so you can kind of go and do what you what you want and spend like you would. Um, but kind of, and it's not just and not just not just with the money part, but there's just there's a spiritual poverty of again. Ne of allowing the Lord to provide all that you need, and and that's it. So uh, there's often times where you like you you there's a there's this desire to kind of store up all these spiritual experiences, or hey, I, I think I'm going to go through this period of desolation or or isolation or or just these hard times going forward. So let me just store up all this stuff, uh, and so so I can get through those times instead of. Give me what I need for now, and then when we when we reach those times, you're still going to provide for me. So mm -hmm. I think the pilgrimage will be a really good time to uh, foster that. Now we'll be able to report as we kind of go along how uh, how that's going. You know, it's it's this grand plan in my mind right now. But you know, it's when when you're over there and you're uh, uh, you know you're, you're going without you know maybe the, the conveniences that we have that we have here uh, for an extended period of time. You know, we'll obviously see of like, okay, Lord please give me this right now. And you know, it will, it'll be a, a good, a good, a good uh, exercise. We'll say. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, so we have uh, the Holy Land pilgrimage blog that uh, the students seminarians are always updating as they're out there. And uh, last year, uh, two now priests um, ran a, um, Holy Land podcast and uh, Kevin and Dan, you guys are taking up the mantle of that, so you're probably packing a microphone as well. We um, are, yes. What are your uh, What are your hopes for the podcast? Uh, I think that it's just to give, give people the, the flavor, the, the experience of of what's going on here. You know, it's we are blessed to really take this this pilgrimage, and and a lot of people aren't aren't able to uh, to do it, especially in the current time. So I think it, uh, my the main thing is to like. How, how do we bring the experience that we're having, um, both the actual things we're doing and how it's, you know, touching us um, interiorly and spiritually? Uh, how do we how do we bring that? So I think the goal will be to, you know, the two of us kind of maybe catch up on on a few things we've been doing uh, and how we're experiencing those. And, to, and then to bring on uh, some of our classmates uh, to, you know, each each time we we record to get, you know, their input. It's uh, we've, we've been Blessed, we we have a really great class. I, I, I'm when, once we we started when we started in first theology and we kind of got introduced to our larger class, um, kind of right away. You are always, always already thinking like, man, I, I'm so excited to actually to go to the Holy Land with these guys. So they're we have so many great guys in our class, uh, and now we actually get to do it and uh, and hear some of their their voices and their experiences and um, all those different things. Definitely, yeah. So. Can you repeat the question again, Matt? <laughs> I already forgot. Uh, yeah, what are your hopes for the for the podcast? Yeah, hopes for the podcast. Yeah, wait, I'm on a podcast. No, uh, <laughs> doing it with Kevin is is great. Ke Kevin and I have um, we've done a little podcasting before in the past uh, with a group of friends, and you know we're we were you know five star, hundred percent five star ratings, millions of viewers, of course. not millions of viewers, but um, <laughs> unfortunately, so but uh, no, we've been, we have to do this a little bit before. And I'm really looking forward to, I'm really looking forward to just sharing what our experience of the, of the Holy Land is, right? And so, because I think it'd be easy to say, well, you know, there was the podcast last year, or, you know, there was the blog last year, so why, why read it or listen to it this year? Um, but like Kevin said, our class, we've got some great personalities. We've got guys who just 
have just such contemplative hearts and are just and are brilliant. And it's going to be it, it's a completely different experience every time a class from Mundelein goes there, as cliche as that might sound. But it really is. And I think some of the insights I'm really looking forward to hearing from our brothers is going to be is it, I just look forward to that so much. And just for us to be to be able to share just mutual experiences, but also differences, um, especially in just how our class is going to interact with uh, with each other over there. Unfortunately, our entire class won't be able to make it, um, but a, a really uh, good number of them will. And so we're just with a smaller group oftentimes can come a greater, uh, you know, greater bond of fellowship. So. Cool. Do you know how many guys are going on this trip? There are 21 seminarians and then some mm -hmm. faculty members will kind of go in and out uh, as, as we go. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Well, um, you guys have mentioned that uh, you'll be praying for our intentions. How can our listeners and followers pray for you guys while you're out over there? Uh, you play, pray for uh, our, certainly our safety. Um, you know, that Israel is, uh, I mean, apart from the, there's the, you know, there's the tensions over there. I'm not so, so much worried about, uh, about that, but uh, just with the COVID stuff, there's very, uh, uh, they're definitely on the more restrictive side. Um, so, they're just there's a lot of like mostly it's like to patience to deal with all the with, with restrictions or things like that so i think patience is a big thing to deal with uh safety and then just that uh again we're able to you know this is always a again it seems like a cliche prayer intention but like we we're able to, to to get from it what god is wants us to get from it that we that our eyes are real to have these, these these eyes to see all the things that we're able to uh to, to get out of it and to bring back and share and, and all these things. I would also ask that our donors and all those supporting us, especially pray for, for this trip to profoundly impact our future ministry. Um, we've heard guys when they've come back preach so often about their experience in the Holy land. Uh, I've heard priests who have been ordained for many years, talk about their experiences with parishioners and just, how it is completely transformed the way that they see things, they, the way they see people and so many other things related to that. So if, if like what Kevin said with just, you know, you know, if the Lord could, if, if what he wants done could be done, but also, especially in regards to just our future ministry, uh, especially as we prepare for ordination. Sounds good. Well, um, I think that's about all the questions I had. So thank you guys uh, for your time. And we look forward to uh, catching up with you in the Holy Land. Yeah. yeah thank awesome. you so Thanks, much, Matt. Matt.